David Pecker, who owns the company that owns National Enquirer, has been friends with Donald Trump for many, 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 many years. And apparently they go way back and Trump would feed him gossip, especially from The Apprentice, and he would print it and they were friends. And who wouldn't want their friend to be president, right? Well, Donald Trump didn't have traditional media outlets to use. Hillary Clinton's got the whole New York Times and the Washington Post and every other outlet that she wants. Trust me, Bloomberg as well. I mean, and I've worked at these places. I've worked at Bloomberg. Like, listen, like it's wired. It's just wired. And so the Democrats can call these places and they can get their story out. Heck, I mean, they were talking about how Tulsi Gabbard, a vet, Imagine that, a military veteran, how she's just a Russian spy, right? Because she was creeping into Hillary's territory. They had to knock her off. That's one of the problems. This is why we have so many old politicians, frankly. This is why they're all so stinking old, because they kill off anybody who could possibly be successful coming up from underneath. And so you get a generation of politicians calling their friends at the New York Times and the Washington Post and anywhere else they can, MSNBC, to basically sort of squash off any competitor. Well, Donald Trump didn't have that option. And he didn't even have it within the conservative media, right? Because it's not like Fox was his friend. I can remember that first debate. I mean, he, he just got, well, you know, some people would say he destroyed, he destroyed the anchor. She would say she destroyed him, but you know, it was certainly contentious. I would say he did not have a lot of friends, even at Fox when he started. I remember being like, wow, I read every tax plan because you know, I do those things. And this is the best, like by far the best. And everybody's like, ah, yeah, but now he's not gonna win. I mean, he did not have a lot of support. I'm just gonna tell you that. He, so yeah, he went to his friend at the National Enquirer and what did they do? They came up with stories to knock off the competition. You know, like Ted Cruz's dad somehow was involved in the assassination of Kennedy. Now David Becker's admitted, yeah, that wasn't true. Or, you know, something about Ben Carson and, and one of the operations that he did and leaving a sponge. I mean, like, I don't even want to repeat this stuff because it was all just made up. Of course, you know, it's the National Enquirer, right? So you assume it's somewhat made up. Well, what's interesting is that they had this whole catch and kill thing going on too. And so for years, they would find a story. Someone would bring them a story and they would get it. And then they'd have them sign these NDAs saying, you can only tell your story to us and then they never run it. And this is what happened apparently with a couple of women, one woman they're not making a big thing over, but with uh, the Stephanie Clifford, they are. But how is it illegal? I mean, that's what I keep getting back to. How is it illegal apparently? They're making a big stink about how he didn't do this ever before for any other politicians. Here's something that is a little excerpt on the NBC website right now I can share with you. And they're pointing out how unusual this was for the National Enquirer to ever do any favors for politicians. Pecker confirmed it says that while he coordinated hundreds of thousands of NDAs during his tenure at AMI, he indicated that the only one he did for a presidential candidate's campaign was for Trump. So I don't understand. Where, it's neither here nor there. Who cares? He's friends with the guy. Yeah, the guy's running for president. He's trying to help his friend out. He thinks that the story is going to be a bad story. He wants to catch and kill it. Voila. There you go. Right. And I mean, it's unseemly. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm so disgusted with the media in general and what they traffic in and the gossip that they traffic in and what they're willing to print, et cetera, et cetera. But it's still not illegal. And she signed an NDA. They're going at this issue of, okay, well, it cost $130,000. And so Michael Cohen paid the $130,000. Was he, was he not paid back by Trump? And why didn't they put this into the campaign expense? Well, I think that there's a valid argument to be made that regardless of whether it was going to help or hurt him on the campaign side, it certainly would have hurt him on his personal life side. So they could run with that argument. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm an economic expert and a market expert, not a lawyer. But this doesn't really add up. And, you know, Dershowitz has said the same thing. And a number of legal scholars have said the same thing. Alvin Bragg didn't even want to bring this case. Don't forget. 
Either that or he was just punting so he could wait until the final moment says, this way you made sure that Donald Trump couldn't actually be at the rallies and doing all the campaigning that he wants to do. It's really bizarre, folks, okay? It's really, really bizarre. And if it were a crime, then why aren't they going after David Pecker? Like, how is he guiltless in all of this? They're not. He's just a witness for them. This is really bonkers. So all in all, you get a media that's terrified, terrified that Donald Trump is going to win. They're running headline after headline, almost as though they're trying to prepare us, trying to prepare us for what might come, which, you know, I have a feeling they're going to try and stack the court because they don't like that you got five conservative justices there. Going back to the New York Times, they write, while the Supreme Court did not appear to buy these sweeping claims altogether, they're talking about, you know, the, the conservative justices and what they're most interested in, the court's conservative justices did seem interested in the idea that presidents should enjoy some form of criminal immunity. Well, yeah. <laughs> Newsflash. Otherwise, otherwise, how can they do their jobs if they're worried about getting sued every two seconds? Over and over, they circled around the notion that presidents were probably protected from prosecution for official actions central to their jobs, but could still face charges for conduct that was private. So, I suspect that Trump's lawyers would argue that what he was doing surrounding January 6th was actually central to his job and that he was trying to protect the system, et cetera, et cetera. And then it comes down to, you know, then you're going to split hairs over that. But immunity, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't they have a certain amount of immunity? Well, they're really worried about this. I'll tell you, it's, it's going to be interesting. I'm beginning to think that we've really broken ourselves as a country. No, we, they. They've broken us. You know, they have, they have just been willing to go too far in too many different directions over and over. And for what? Why? Because you don't like a guy who's going to come in and shake things up and do things his way instead of your way. He's not part of the status quo. Well, Americans are sick of the status quo. The status quo is not getting us anywhere.